Jimbo's Garage. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to Jimbo's Garage. Today's project is we're going to be working on my truck rack out here. What I've got, I've got to do some modifications out there. I've got, I have a hard time uh, transporting these larger gates. I've got a gate that I'm working on now that's six feet wide and 13 feet long, and I have really no way of transporting it uh, to and from the powder coaters and then to and from the job. Um, without running the trailer and I don't want to do that. But I think we can do some modifications to the existing truck rack in the back of the truck that we'll be able to uh, transport it. So let's go out there and take a look at it and see what we can do. Today's video is sponsored by King Metals. They've got all your fabrication needs in one location. From hinges to hardware, balusters to metal decor, brass to aluminum, and a whole lot more. You name it, they've got it. Check them out today at kingmetals.com. Now let's get back to today's video. All right, so the first thing we got to do is something with the top of my rack right here. Now I've only got about five feet across right here and what I need to do is extend this out uh, at least another nine inches or maybe a foot on either side uh, to give me the width. And I've got an idea for that, so we'll deal with that later on in the video. But let's talk about the back of the truck right here. All right, so on the back of my truck right here, I've conveniently got these uh, slots or holes in the back of my bed um, that I think that we can do something with. Um, they're roughly about an inch and three quarter wide by maybe three inches long. And I don't know, maybe down about six or seven inches deep. So I'm thinking that I can get something down in here and um, maybe wedge it in a little bit because we're not gonna find the nominal size material to make this fit properly. And then I'm thinking it needs to come up a little bit with a round pipe on it that's gonna go across and that pipe needs to be just high enough to get above the back of my bed right here that's gonna be on top of that rail and not gonna interfere with the bed of the truck right here. So I think I got an idea for that. So let's see what we can put together. All right, so after hours of contemplation and several beers later, I finally figured out a decent design. And actually this inch and a half by three inch rectangular tube fits pretty tight inside that hole and I think it's gonna work out pretty good. <clears throat> so I've went ahead and cut a 24 inch piece right here and right now I'm laying out uh, in the center a two inch uh, square if you will because I'm gonna notch the center of this right here uh, to allow for the two inch pipe that we're gonna put in. I got my JD squared notch master right here. And this thing I, I believe is, is designed really for, for round tube, uh, but I've managed to put a plate behind that and, and, uh, and get this rectangular tube in there. The idea is to take this two inch hole saw and just kind of split the difference right here and it's gonna give me both pieces I need with a, with a two inch notch in there that'll allow for that two inch pipe to, uh, to rest in. Yeah, it works pretty good. Um, like I said, I'm not certain if this is designed for square or rectangular tube, but uh, uh, this uh, worked out pretty good for me here. All right, so once that's done, what I had to do is lay out the taper. So right, right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to taper it down from uh, about halfway through this, uh, this, this hole and about four, four inches, four and a half inches down. Uh, and then it's going to be that taper where that taper is going to go with the pipe's going to fit in. It'll be the same diameter, and then it'll taper right down flush to the bed of the truck. That's my plan anyway. Uh, I, I'm hoping it's going to work out the way I, uh, I planned it. And you might see that I'm not running it all the way to the very end. I'm, I'm, I'm leaving about an eighth inch, and I'm putting a little notch in it right there. That is going to allow for the uh, inch and a half by by eighth inch flat bar that I'm going to weld on the outside to kind of cover and, and, and conceal everything. <clears throat> All right, just notching it out right here uh, in the port of band and, and bringing in the angles right here. And you can see that uh, I take it right down to the end right there on both sides. And then this is where I got a little bit of a, little bit of a problem happening. You can see it's starting to curl up a little bit. And I couldn't, it was jumping around a little bit, so I could not uh, make the cut. So I just took a hammer and I pounded those things down inside and I was able to uh, go ahead and finish my cut right here. And that's the little notch that's going to uh, allow for the eighth inch by inch and a half flat bar. And this is just the other side. <clears throat> I 
well you can see the camera all of a sudden starting to dip down <laughs> i forgot to tighten up the camera and it was uh it's starting to fall right there well got it just in time before it completely went to the bottom all right this is the flat bar strap right here <clears throat> and this is what i'm going to do to weld and, and close it up um, the idea is to make it look like a solid piece uh you know solid piece of metal all right there's the first look at the htp revolution 2500 this is a brand new machine from htp this is a multi-purpose machine mig tig and stick that has pulse in all three processes it's an amazing uh, amazing machine this is the uh, the first look of it right here i've got it set on manual mig for this uh process <clears throat> Seems to be working pretty good. All right, so this is the first one. And uh, I made, I don't want to say, well, I made a little mistake, I guess. That, that <clears throat> the part of the rectangular tube was a little bit on the inside of the inch and a half right there. I wasn't really happy with it. It was about an eighth inch off. And, you know, I just, uh, it was just a tack. So I, I was able to fix it. And I just couldn't deal with that being off that much. So. I was able to just fix it up right there. Once I got happy with it, then I went ahead and just welded it out. You know, so far it's coming together pretty good. It's kind of what I was hoping for. Um, now, these wells certainly aren't pretty by any means, but it doesn't matter because they're all going to get ground down. I'm trying to, the idea is to get everything smoothed up. <clears throat> all right, so this is the second one. So, you know, you make your mistake on the first one. I wasn't paying attention and uh, I was not going to make the mistake on the second one. So everything lined up really good here. And you can see that uh, I'm lining it up, <clears throat> tacking it, and pushing that in. And you can see I push it in a little bit right there. So this is how I fix that. So, when, you know, you learn from your mistakes on the first one and get them corrected for the rest of them here. All right, looking pretty good. Uh, now it's time to uh, get things ground off. We've got a brand new ceramic trimmable flap disc here from Mercer. Man, and those blades are, when those flap discs are brand new, they are razor blade sharp and it, they remove metal quickly. And I just love putting a new blade on. <clears throat> and like I said, the idea is to make it look like one solid piece of metal right here. And uh, you know, this is what we're doing. You know, it's just, it's a fun thing about fabrication. You know, you get these ideas in your head and, and uh, you can you can actually create them and do them and, and it, it's very satisfying that if the, if everything works out. But so far, I'm pretty pleased the way things are turning out here. It's uh, that was just the way I was hoping. It was a little bit more of a closer shot of the, uh, of cleaning up the angles and, and how everything kind of blends together right here after you use a flap disc and grind everything. Now, I am going to paint this right now, uh, but if everything works real good, I'll probably drop it off at the powder coaters. They'll sandblast prime and powder coat it, and uh, it'll end up being a really nice finish. But for now, I'm just going to get some paint on it. You can see uh, uh, the rectangular tubing has got an, about an eighth inch round over on the edges right there, and I'm just trying to replicate that as best I can and, and uh, make it look like it's a nice one solid piece. And there it is. All right, two inch round tube here. This is a 095 wall thickness. And uh, this is, uh, I got this at my metal supply store. And what I decided on is 80 inches. 80 inches is the, is the length of the tube that I'm gonna need. This is the test fit right here. Dropped them in, I'm happy with the way that fits. I got my 80 inches. I'm measuring, be sure I got the same reveal on both sides. And then I'm just gonna take a Sharpie and mark them. Take this back over to the welding table and start tacking it together. All right, so I got a couple of uh, uh, my table logs here and I'm gonna bring this pipe in nice and square and I'm gonna set this in and everything just sits pretty nice just the way it is right there. Pretty happy with it. So I'm gonna hold it in right here and I'm gonna get a couple tacks on it and you can see I let it rest down and the same with this one right here. Once I got in, I let it rest down and that is the angle they're nice and lined up nice and even at that point before i get too carried away here um, i'm going to get a couple tacks on this and i am going to test fit it uh, you know what happens when you start welding stuff things start drawing in and the tolerances were like super tight right here so i had to be sure it fits real good 
and it looks like uh, that fits right in there nice and tight all right I'm pretty happy with that now let's go finish this out <clears throat> And because I cut the groove or that notch on the uh, rectangular tube right there, uh, two inches uh, against this two inch round tube, we had a nice tight joint, a nice tight fit up all the way around and it made uh, welding really smooth and really nice. All right, so I'm not, I'm just gonna clean up the welds a little bit. I'm not gonna get too carried away. I kinda like it. Everything looks really nice and smooth and so I'm just not gonna get too carried away with grinding everything down nice and flat. Just taking off any uh, BBs that might have been left over or any, uh, you know, rough bumps. But everything was in there pretty smooth and I'm pretty happy with that right there. All right, so the fit got it going here a little crooked right there. Yeah, once you got to get it going on, you got to get going in nice and straight right here. And that fit in there really nice once you get going in straight. Okay, so this fits pretty good. I'm really happy with the way this turned out. It's nice and solid on there. It's fairly easy to get in and out, and uh, I think this is going to work out really good. Now for the top piece up there. Uh, because of the situation that I have, and I got that piece of rubber tube around the, around the pipe, the only thing I could find was this piece of drain pipe right here. Now this is some 3 inch SDR 35 drain pipe. And so what I did is I actually cut and notched a slot in the back of this. And so what I'm going to be able to do is just slide it on this way. And I'm only trying to pick up, you know, like I said, 80 inches. That, that's what I'm trying to pick up. That's, that, that's how wide this is. And it's just going to be long enough to be able to get anything that I'm ever going to need on this top. Let's just try to slide this in and see what it looks like. All right, so no problem uh, sliding it right in when the pipe is unpainted. And, uh, you know, it's pretty slick on the inside. So uh, it slid over that rubber tube pretty good. And uh, I thought, that's great. That'll work out really good. So it's going to be kind of something like that. I'm going to paint this black. And everything will look pretty good. I know it's kind of hokey going down the road, but I'm only going to use it when I'm carrying big long gates. Now the idea is to for the gates to fit up on the top on this rail without hitting this and coming down this way. And then I'll be able to tie them off both top and bottom with some tie downs, and I think we'll be good. So overall, that's my pro that's my uh, my project right here. Let me get these things painted and let's go get a gate. All right, I got some paint on it, and here was the battle. Now this provided some friction and it got super tight and <clears throat> I had a hard time sliding it over the over that uh, rubber tube but ultimately I got it and I think this design is going to work. I, I'm not going to be using this all the time but uh, maybe I'll come up with a little bit different idea but so far that worked pretty good and there's the gate that picked it up from the powder coaters. It was a perfect scenario for me. I'll be able to haul no problem some longer gates. I, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. Don't forget to check out my website at jimblesgarage.com for torch lead holders and apparel, shirts and hats and stickers. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next video. See you next time on Jimbo's Garage.